Hey everybody, my name's Casey. I run the next build. And a few days ago, I was waiting to see what the announcement for Bamboo Labs was gonna be, you know, and it came out to be the HDS, the single nozzle, basically H2D without the, the dual extruders or dual nozzles. And then they just decided to drop a huge teaser for the new Vortec system that they're running. So I'm gonna kind of give some speculation and a reaction and what I think they're gonna do with this new system. If that sounds interesting to you, let's continue with the video. All right, here we go. For the past three years, we've been working on a cleaner, more effective way to handle. All right, first things first, I kind of saw this and the reason I probably stuck out to me is because they were announcing the H2S. So. Starting right off the bat, I don't think this is going to be compatible with H2S solely because right here, you guys can see my cursor. Um, the H2S only has one Bowden tube and one hot end. And it's kind of, from what I saw, it's like right in the middle. Okay. And so there is no room for expansion. So I don't think this is going to be compatible with the H2S. Um, I think it's going to be either an H2D system like you can put it on that or it's going to be its own h2 whatever okay h2c h2 color um i think it's going to be a separate printer i don't think it's going to be the h2s i don't think it's going to be the h2d it's again just going to be its own separate printer and that's because it has the dual but it's also a little bit different it doesn't have the hot ends like you can see the hot end right there and then this is the hot swap or whatever we're going to call it uh, with the two Bowden tubes. So I think where this is an entirely different printer altogether that this system is going to come pre-installed on. Let me know what you guys think about that. That's just my take. For the past three years, we've been working on a cleaner, more effective way to handle multicolor prints. Also, just thought of this randomly. Let's go back real quick. Okay. Do you guys think, I don't know how they do this in the slicer or the G code. Do you think you'll be able to put different uh, diameters nozzles? So like a 0.2 with a 0.4 or a 0.6. Like if you could use the 0.2 on like finer detail and then the 0.4 for something that's not as fine, maybe. I, I don't know, but that'd be interesting. Um, and then also, we see we got two, four, six. So I'm wondering if they're coming out of the gate with this and it's going to be six colors, or and I can say there's at least six. Handle multicolor prints. In 2022, we launched the X1 series and democratized multicolor 3D printing forever, making it more accessible to seasoned users and newcomers alike. Look at those colors. I mean, who can deny the joy of crafting with all colors of the rainbow? Colors. But this came at the cost of purge. Those little noodles of regret that get spat out with every print. You know he wanted to say it. He said, he said noodles, but there's no way. It's poop. You can't convince me or the community what that is or call it anything else. You should have done that before we named it poop. It is poop. Call it what it is. It's wasteful, it's time-consuming, and it's a problem that plagues every player in the industry. It is time-consuming. Purging the printer is like washing a paintbrush between colors. You clean it every time so one color doesn't contaminate the next. So, how do you eliminate this tedious step? Use multiple brushes, each with a dedicated color. Sounds simple, but with 3D printing, which part is equivalent to the brush? The nozzle? The tool head? The entire gantry? Some put multiple tool heads on a shared gantry. I think they did this shot right here because of Snapmaker to kind of show, hey, this is what Snapmaker's doing, and you'll see what they say in a second. To avoid disconnections, sacrificing space for greater stability. Other see right there. So I think they added that to a cross to kind of point to Snapmaker and say, this is what they're doing. They're sacrificing space. Okay. I think that's kind of what they're saying. There's look what Snapmaker's doing, sacrificing the space. For stability. Others squeeze more nozzles in the tool head. 
more compact overall, but print speeds suffer with such a bulky assembly. It's always a trade-off between reliability, volume, and cost. Typically, contamination happens in the hot end. So we set our sights on a simple approach aimed right at the source. We call it the Vortec Hot End Change System. It's one of the first induct... All right, another reason why I don't think it's going to be compatible with the H2S is because the H2S does not have this glass panel on the side. This is the door. Hot end change. Um, let me see if I can get a... Right there. That glass panel is not there. So I think this is a completely different printer, probably more akin to the H2D. The Vortec Hot End Change System. It's one of the... And I guess there we go. Six colors. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six colors. So we're moving from the AMS system uh, to six colors. I'm wondering how they're going to do that with you have the with, if you have the AMS on top. Um, I know you can expand and have those two little AMS systems. So uh, is that how it's going to have to be, or are they going to launch a whole new AMS? I doubt that's what they're going to do. They're probably saying you can do six colors, but you're going to have to have those two additional little AMS systems onto this. First, induction heated, fully automated hot end swap solution. All right, right here. So again, that's why I don't think it's the H2S is because for the H2D, this is a completely different thing. This is a whole different hot end from both of those or box, I guess. Kind of what I thought of too when I first saw this. So this is just a S24 Ultra. It has a little stylus right here and it, you can press it in and it clicks out and that's how you hold it. That's kind of what I thought of first. So I, I'm wondering if that's how it's going to go is it clicks in and then something's going to go around it and hold it. And then to uh, decouple it, it's going to have to have some pressure to push up and then it's going to decouple that and then allow it to be pulled out. I'm wondering if that's how it's going to go. We avoided using cables or pogo pins that easily wear out when the hot end is swapped thousands of times in a single print. Instead, a built-in chip syncs with the printer wirelessly to transmit power and real-time data like temperature, filament type, and so on. With That's kind of cool. Um, the real-time info there. Uh, you are, I'm, I'm thinking you are going to have to add some time to prints. Not more than the AMS system, but nozzles are going to cool down. And so you're going to have to reheat those nozzles more often, right? Like if you use a color on the bottom and then by the time you use it again, when it's all the way up here, you're going to have to reheat heat that again. So that could add some time. Without compromising efficiency, the nozzle heats by induction in just eight seconds. All right, hold on. Heats with induction. I do have some experience with induction heaters. They make, you know, cooktops like that. Um, so it, it apparently heats really fast. So disregard everything I just said. This is going to heat fast, is what they're saying. Vortec is our epilogue to the imperfections of X1. It's our first attempt to solve the problem of purge. All right and we couldn't be more eager to share it with you in an exciting new launch later this year. All right, so that's coming out really soon here. Uh, Q4, I believe, starts October 1st. And so we're gonna see something around there. And then October 10th, somewhere around there, I think that's when the H2S is launching. So maybe we'll get the announcement around that time too to get some more buzz around Bamboo. Um, they're doing it at a good time because that's holiday season. People are going to be buying a lot of stuff. Hopefully they do a sell. We'll see. But it's pretty cool that we're expanding from four colors to six. Uh, pretty much the way that I think this is going to go. I have a hot end right here from an A1. Um, they said all of or most of the contamination that happens happens through in here, throughout here. And so what's going to happen is I think they're going to cut the filament and then you're going to see the filament is just going to stay in there. And when you need it again, it's just going to go back up. And so that's how I literally think they're going to do it is just kind of with my S24 is they're going to, it's going to click couple. And then when it's ready to go, it's going to cut decouple and that's how it's going to go. So I'm wondering what they're going to do for the purge. If, if there's any at all, I'm, I'm curious to see, or if it's all just going to be right here in this, uh, prime tower or purge block, 
You know, is, is there going to be anything? Because I know prime towers, you got to have the stabilization of pressures in the nozzle and things like that. And so I'm wondering if that's what they're going to, you know, put all of the waste, if that's the only waste on that um, system. So kind of cool. Uh, another thing I saw is right here, they have that little kind of, I don't know what to call it, the the nozzle blocker that switches back and forth with the H2D. They have it right there as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think they're combining aspects of both H2S or the H2S is just a pared down H2D, but I think this is just the H2D system. Um, but this is a completely different hot end assembly f allowing for quick swap. That's essentially what I'm getting from it. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. I, Okay, hold on. So they got the AMS up here. How many colors are they using? This is just something that caught my eye. Let's, where are the colors? Show me. Vortec is our epilogue to the imperfections of X1. It's our first. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so they're using six colors, but they only have a four AMS system, so. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they had the two up there. Maybe they're just on the back on external spool holders. Who knows? So that's pretty much my thoughts on this. And like I said, I think this is its own separate, com uh, not computer, its own separate printer. Uh, it's not going to be the H2S. I don't think you're going to be able to add it onto the H2S. I don't think it's going to be the H2D. I don't think you're going to be able to add it onto the H2D. We, we might be able to. Um, and then this is also something I just saw too. Right down here on this build plate, you are going to be sacrificing a little bit of space because you got the nozzles, right? So this nozzle is not going to be able to reach all the way over to this side. Same thing with H2D, and that's what the H2S eliminates. So that's another thing you're going to have to kind of look into to see if you want, if you want that extra space or not versus the color system. So that's my thought on this new system slash printer we'll see what happens um they said it says q4 that's october 1st so uh i could see them teasing or announcing or showing doing a full showcase and having all the youtubers and influencers already probably have this and i could see them releasing it around the h2s release date um to kind of show everybody what exactly it is so that's just my speculation if you've enjoyed this, be sure to like and comment what you guys think this is all about. Give me your speculations as well. Um, and then if you like this content, be sure to subscribe. I do a lot of 3D printing and cosplays, but if you like this kind of content too, I, I don't mind reacting and kind of giving my two cents as well. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for, thanks for watching. I'm the next build.